The M1 Mac Mini is hands down the best value computer that you are going to find, period. And that hasn't changed with the latest offerings from Apple hitting the street either. And you know what? You should still buy one of these. So why is that? Let's find out. I, I caught it because it's too important to me to break. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. Yes, we made a similar video to this a few months ago, but much like the M1 MacBook Air video we redid, those older videos were made in the world before the M1 Pro MacBooks were released. While there is a ton of hype and excitement around those brand new 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros, and Yes, they are amazing. They aren't the best option for everybody, and in all actuality, even the lowest end 14 inch model is a pretty niche product, where the M1 Mac Mini is so much easier for me to make a general recommendation on. And good news, this video is that easier recommendation, but with a little more in-depth thoughts after I have used this thing every single day for over a year. And that's really where I want to start out. And yes, we'll get into the price in a second. Yes, we'll get into the power in a second. But the single best reason to buy the M1 Mac Mini is the reliability. I've never in my life had a computer that's worked as well as this Mini. I've never had a major crash. I've never had a corruption problem. I've never even had any real minor annoyances. Yes, I've heard about folks having Bluetooth issues with their specific Mac Minis, which sucks, but personally, because of my switcher and because of how I use my keyboard and mouse through that switcher, I've never seriously had a connection issue. But it's not just accessory connections that I've found to be seamless, it's just everything. I've said this on previous videos, but I used to have daily problems with Mac OS Catalina. And if you don't know, that was the operating system before Big Sur if you are new to Mac. And no kidding, if you look back at my content from about a little over a year ago, I had totally switched over to Windows for all of this YouTube work because of how many issues that Catalina gave me. Big Sur was really Apple's chance to win me back because it doesn't matter how powerful or how many neat specs or whiz bang features you include in a computer or other piece of technology, if it's software doesn't work with that hardware, you are kind of up the creek. In fact, I've been having a hiccup or two with Monterey on those new shiny MacBooks over the past couple of weeks. So when I do have a problem, I keep defaulting back to my Mac mini because it's like my rock of stability and reliability. And you know what? You can't really put a price tag on that. And Good news, because the next reason to keep buying the M1 Mac Mini is easily the price. There is not a better priced computer, period. I don't mean Mac, I don't mean Windows, I don't mean some kind of crazy Linux setup. I mean, you will not find a more capable desktop computer at this price. At retail, you can buy one of these at its base model for $699, but you can pretty easily find those on Amazon on sale. Yes, I've seen them as low as $599, and you can even get them refurbished from Apple themselves for $549. Where else can you get a computer like this for $549 that meets these features? Legitimately, you can't. You might be able to find a computer for cheaper, but it will be absolutely lacking in real power, build quality, or some other key factors. Like I've been talking about this for a year, I have not found anything that matches up to this price for price. Yes, you'll need to buy some accessories to build around the Mac Mini. It, I mean, it doesn't work by itself. You will need a monitor, keyboard, mouse, etc. But even those you could get for relatively little and you could easily build a full desktop computer setup for under a thousand dollars. Heck, probably under eight or nine hundred dollars depending on what kind of accessories you buy. That base model Mac Mini comes with an eight core M1 standard processor, eight core GPU, eight gigabytes of unified memory, and a 256 gigabyte solid state drive. If there was one spot on the specs that I wish was a little higher, it would be that 256 gigabytes doubling to 512. But even then, we're still talking about a ridiculously value-packed computer. And the next reason to keep buying the Mac Mini is that power in those specs that we just talked about. I want you to think about something. The M1 standard inside of this computer is certainly the, you know, quote unquote, weakest computer processor that Apple currently makes. But to go up to the next level of power of their chips, you gotta go with the base model MacBook Pro 14 to get the M1 Pro processor. In single core performance, you will not notice a difference. And in multi-core workflows, you won't notice a difference. Yes, the M1 Pro scores about 1800 points higher on the Cinebench test compared to the M1 standard, but does here's a here's a serious question. Stop and think about what you're going to use your computer for on a daily basis. Does a significant part of your life include running Cinebench and getting the highest number? I mean that's obviously a joke because that's not a real job. And yes, I know cue everybody writing a comment right now talking about how they spend literally all day running Cinebench on their Macs. So I get it. Somebody out there will say that is my job, Gary. Seriously though, power for power's sake 
doesn't really get you much, and I think the Mac Mini is still plenty powerful enough even for power users. Not every power user. Some power users will need 32 or 64 gigabytes of unified memory. You can't get that here. But for regular folks looking for a simple home computer or students looking for a dorm computer, office workers, etc., this has power. You will not find in other computers at the same price. Heck, it trounces the Intel MacBook Pro 16 in those benchmarks that we just talked about. And that's the i9 version I own that ran through those benchmarks. And it costs four times what this Mac Mini does. It drives me absolutely bonkers when I hear folks talk about how underpowered this computer is because it's not. Sure, the Mac Mini might be underpowered next to my custom-built Windows PC, but that PC costs $3,000. Sure, it might be underpowered next to my M1 Max MacBook Pro 16, but that costs three and a half thousand dollars Unless you specifically need those power levels, you can save yourselves so much money and headache by going with this mini yet mighty Mac. It tries, I'm telling you team, you're, some of my frustration is coming across here. If you wanna spend money just to get the biggest numbers, go for it. But if you're just a regular person getting a regular computer, this is the best thing you can get. And for the naysayers, let me again plug that while I'm not a coder, graphic designer, or Pixar animator, I ran this entire YouTube channel for over a year off of this Mac Mini, and this is the 16 gigabyte unified memory, one terabyte storage model. I make all of these videos in 4K. I shoot all of the videos in 4K 10-bit HEVC or H.265 files, which is literally something that I never thought I would say because these video files are a nightmare to work with on any machine that's not an M1 Mac. And while the video is rendering, I'll run Photoshop at the same time to make the thumbnail. I've never had a power problem or even a memory problem with the Mac Mini. Don't spend $4,000 on a laptop to make YouTube videos because you think the M1 Max is the only processor that can handle it. That's not true. Okay, now I'm getting down off my soapbox. Let's get to the next reason to buy the Mac Mini. To this day, it's still the Mac with the best I.O. layout. Yes, the brand new MacBooks are the best laptops for ports, but I still personally prefer what the Mac Mini has on offer. You get HDMI, Thunderbolt 3, USB-A, a dedicated Ethernet with a 10 gigabit Ethernet available if you want it. That's exactly what I need from a computer. And you might all think I'm crazy, but I will still use USB-A accessories all the time to this day, and I hate needing a dongle to make them work. And I just, let me be real with you team, I just hate dongles. Yes, I use them out of necessity, but man, I hate everything about needing to buy, store, and carry around extra parts just because my computer doesn't have the plugs built into it. Ugh. Plus, while you might not get the up to four external displays you can get via the M1 Max processor, here you can still do one 6K monitor out from the Thunderbolt 3 port, and one 4K monitor out from the HDMI port. So even if you can't have the wall-o monitors that every kid grew up wanting, you can at least have the, like, corner of monitors? You know, because you put them next to each other and then they make a corner? Wow, is it is it lamer if I call out how lame that was? The next reason to keep buying the Mac Mini is kind of tied in with the I.O. layout. This thing is dead silent. I've literally never heard the fans, and I've both done long-term gaming on this, and like I said, I do pretty rough video editing on it too. I play one of the few games that's actually optimized for M1 processors in WoW Classic, and it runs really well, but the performance part is not the benefit for this section. It's that the computer never really gets hot and never makes a noise. My M1 Max MacBook Pro 16 doing the same thing will absolutely have the fans turn on after a little bit of getting my new Season of Mastery character going. Now, it's not terrible or anything, but you will hear it, and if you've been using these computers for as long as I have, all fan noise is getting to be real irritating at this point. But the Mac Mini? Nope. It's got a very big fan on the back. Check it out. See that? I know it works because I felt air coming out of the back of this thing before, but even when the fans are spinning, it's super silent. Yes, I get that that's a very small part of the overall package, and sure, fan noise isn't the worst thing in the world, but I'm telling you, once you get used to a totally silent computer, it will change your whole perspective on how loud you will allow your tech to be. And the last reason I want to give on why you should still buy the M1 Mac Mini, longevity. This computer will last for a very long time. Like I said, it doesn't get very hot. There isn't much overall stress put on the components of this machine. And despite that, I mean, that's cool and all, but if you're not pushing this thing to the max, even if you are just a regular person looking for a computer, this will still have all the power you could hope for for years to come. Even though I'm sure there are new Mac minis on the horizon, 
probably sometime even early next year. Unless they totally discontinue this computer, it won't change the fact that this will still be the best value desktop computer, period. They can't sell the same thing again, right? So I imagine that when they do eventually replace this thing, they'll come out with an M1 Pro variant of the Mac Mini, and like we saw on the MacBooks, it'll be great but there will be a price tag for that excellence. Here, you know what you are getting, and you can get many long years of updates and enjoyments out of this, the least expensive Mac that you can buy. But at the end of the day, so what, right? Look, no kidding, I still think the M1 Mac Mini is the best value computer probably ever made, and it will continue to be so, probably forever. I assume Apple will want to hold dominion over this specific marketplace, so even a potential replacement for this Mac Mini would need to cost roughly the same amount. I highly, highly recommend the M1 Mac Mini. It might not be my favorite computer ever. I would say that that probably goes to the M1 MacBook Air and the M1 Max MacBook Pro 16, but those are flashier, so of course they're gonna be more fun and higher up on my favoritism list. But what is the computer that I've actually used the most? It's not even close. I've used the Mac Mini far more than any other computer that I've ever owned. Barring that iMac Pro I leased for a few years, a couple of years ago. By the time I've owned this for as long as I leased that iMac, I guarantee I will have used this more because it's the overall better computer. And you should absolutely still buy one and save yourself some money compared to those new M1 Pro and M1 Max laptops. And if you like this video and you would like to see a little bit more of a direct comparison between this and one of the M1 Pro MacBooks, here's a link to my video where I compare this to the base model M1 MacBook Pro 14, and you can find that by clicking right here. Click, 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 click. Thanks for watching.